Wednesday, August 24th, and this is about the milk carton and the bottle in orthographic and axonometric. This sketch just shows what I was talking about earlier, about uh, you know the true relationship between these projections. Uh, by the way, these lines, what I'm calling the projection lines, you don't see them anymore in CAD, right? They're just not there because you know CAD gives you the thing already. Uh, whereas when we draw by hand, they're really important because of, they allow you to, uh, you know, derive uh, another view by simply projecting those lines. I mean, in this case, it's kind of similar, but if I project up, does that show? So what you have is you have correspondences that you get by simply projecting lines from one one view to the other. Okay. So once again, in orthographic, which is we're going to do both orthographic and axonometric today. In orthographic, the projection lines are parallel to each other, and the object. And this is again, again, it's a simplification. Is parallel to the plane. Okay. Uh, so in this case, if it's a cube the face of the cube is parallel to the projection plane. Uh, then the next option with axonometric, which is when we get oblique objects, uh, which kind of look like in perspective, but they're not because all these lines are still all parallel to each other. Um, in this case, the lines are at an angle towards in relation to the plane, or the plane is at an angle in relation to the lines, okay? It's the same thing, really. And then the last one, of course, is perspective, where you start having the lines converging to different points. Okay, so for the first assignment, so we're gonna draw the carton, milk carton, and we're gonna draw a bottle, okay? And we're gonna do orthographics of each first. So for the carton, what you do is you need to have It's going to be very schematic here, but so we're going to call it the front. We're going to call that the right view, the left view, the back. This will be the bottom and the top. Okay. For the bottle, it's going to be a little different because you really just need two views for the bottle, and we're going to do a top and a front. All right. um, and then for each, if you look at the, uh, at the assignment sheet, we're going to do uh, two or three views of um, um, axonometric. Okay, so this would be one here. Maybe another one lying sideways like that. And then for the bottle, we just need to construct okay, very schematic. So those are the four sketches. Now these are really worth like only five points, so don't worry too much about them, but you know, try to get your um, you know, your hand going and your, your, your movement going. So let's just say that for the curtain, uh, what you need to figure out is roughly the proportion. So you need to block it out and you need to plan your drawing so that you know, so that you have enough room, okay? And uh, depending whether it's square, depending whether it's tall, the main thing is that the relationships are the same um, with each other, you know, with all the different views. Um, the thing that changes is on top here. So let's just say, if I make it like this, let's say that's my front. Well, first of all, you'll find that you find that once you start laying it out, maybe you can do a couple of sketches to see, like more or less, how they fit. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be uh, quickly running out of space myself. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
but you can see the the proportion now. That was kind of funny. Uh, the proportion is a little off, so this is a little taller. So I probably need to shorten that. Okay. Once I get one side, so this is wrong, right? This is much taller than it is wider, so this is not quite right. It's probably even more like that. Okay, then you get the other views. Just like that. I'm gonna go a little quicker because I'm gonna run out of the time on the video and I wanna get the bottle and then I can go over again a little more in detail. And that's the other view right here. Um, so at the bottom would be here. And in this case, it's probably a square. So pay attention to like the orientation. So if I did this, that would be wrong, right? Because if I'm looking at it like this, I turn it, and that's my view actually. It's right there, like that. So this is wrong. Um, there are instructions about doing a title block around the drawing. Um, that's on the front page in iLearn. And then what you want to do is put a couple of labels. Okay. Somebody asked uh, about the drawings and whether they should be uh, uh, freehand. Yeah, these four drawings, look, they can be freehand. And you can, again, clean them up a little bit. By cleaning them up, I don't mean like erasing them, but just taking a straight edge and, and doing some lines. They're like, you know, maybe touching them up a little bit. Or you can do the whole thing freehand, so don't worry too much about it. Um, I think you should do th the part where you lay it out uh, freehand to kind of get, you know, get a sense of where everything is and get a sense of the proportions, okay? Um, so once again, if you have your curtain, you know, decide which one is your front, uh, and then that's the view from the right, that's the view from the left, the view from the top, the view from the bottom, and then all the way back is the back. Um, so take a quick look at the lettering uh, resource and also the, there's a template to do the, the uh, border and a title block um, and it shows you like how big a border around the, um, just be careful, don't cut yourself, but a border around your sheet is to take, to line it up with something, you know, like the edge of your desk or something and then you can use uh, your fingers as a little guide. Okay, so that's, I'm going to use that as a little spacer. And then you can you know, do a pretty straight line like that. Okay, so that's your little marker. So once again, the main thing is that your parts are in relationship to each other. So for example, here, this view should correspond, this, this width should correspond to this width. In other words, this is kind of moving this way, and this is moving this way. Um, this is going this way. And depending on where your roof is, you know, this line will be either this way or that way. So you could decide that your front is, you know, this this view. So things would shift. Okay. Uh, now for the orthographic. Uh, the simplest, ortho I mean, yeah, I mean, not orthographic. For the isometric, for the axonometric, the simplest one is the isometric. And that is where you use the angles um, of your drawing for your, in this case, horizontals using more or less the angle of your triangle, uh, of the 30-60 triangle, okay? Uh, these are small ones, but you need to get bigger ones, right? And get a, a set that's pretty good, okay? So that's one, and then the other one is like that, right? But this is 45. And this is 30. 
degrees and this is 60 degrees and really all that means is that you know if you have 360 you know 45 degree angle is this one so this one is 45, and then a 30 degrees, since this is 90, would be here. So that's the set. Um, and the advantage of that angle is that, for example, a cube you can easily inscribe into a circle, essentially. Um, and then with the compass you could even draw it like this and it would give you all these points. And you could draw a cube that way. Um, but you can experiment. So let's go back to the one that I drew before. Um, yeah, try, uh, oh, let's talk about pencils. So, a lot of people like the type of mechanical pencil where you just push and the lead comes up, comes out, rather. Um, so, I'm zooming now. You won't see the zooming in in the video, unfortunately, because uh, it's a different lens, right? Uh, so my preference is actually for uh, for this guy, and the reason for that. Okay, let me see if I can see. Oh, this doesn't have anything. All right, let's just take these two. They look pretty cool, huh? When they're so big. Um, and the reason for that is that even though this is small, you can see that I'm never going to get any sharper than that, right? Because that's a set thickness. With this guy, however, um, which has got a, uh, um, I can sharpen it with this gadget, which is it's a little more money and you have to buy an extra. They, they, they have a slightly different model, but you, you sharpen it this way. Remember, whenever you do a mark, it's never going to be right. It's always going to be either to the left or to the right of where you thought, you know, you were going, right? And that's because it's just nature, right? You can't. So it's just a question of tolerances and how, you know, how close you want to be. So there is then a little bit, a little, um, it's, it's almost like a, like a cigarette filter. And then that's how you clean the... So now let's take a look again at that. of a sudden you can see that that point is really pointy so even if you get you know these guys at you know point I think this is 0.5 let me just say yeah this is 0.5 millimeters uh, it's not as sharp as this one now sometimes you know that's a pain because you can't keep it this sharp all the time one way to keep it sharp is to or to get it to, to minimize the dulling effect is to actually turn. With the other one, if you turn, it doesn't do anything. But with this, if I turn the pencil, can you see it? It actually uh, keeps the uh, keeps the point sharp and does not make it go like this. Okay, so it keeps it keeps it round, keeps it even, even if it gets a little blunt. So anyway, that's my preference, but you guys can use this if you want. Or you can use pencils, too. If you use pencils, I would recommend getting yourselves a nice portable sharpener. And unfortunately, this particular model they don't make anymore. This is really good uh, with batteries, so you don't have to like get up all the time to go to whatever to sharpen. Um, okay. So, so we said that for the... Um, for the axonometric, we're going to do at least two views, maybe one where it's sitting up straight, and the other view is maybe sideways. Uh, let's see. Okay. 
we talked about how, in effect, this could become the sideways view just by turning it like that. All right, so all of a sudden, that's now my, my surface where it's resting on. Right? It all depends on, oops. Okay, let's move on. So these drawings are already made, so what I'll do is I'll rescan them in this sequence. Um, and um, so this is the view where it's the same isometric, so 30, 30. What happens in that view, this is a little bit off, is that we we tend to make these dimensions the same. So this is the same as this. Uh, so the distortion is the same, or rather there is no distortion. But if you start changing those angles, if this angle becomes shallower and this one becomes wider, then you have to adjust. So all of a sudden this thing wouldn't look right if you kept this particular distance here. Right? Because then all of a sudden it looks like a you know, like a tube thing. Uh, so what we do is we shorten the view that gets more, um, more, more of the angle. Because what happens is this is going to start approaching the real square. If I turn that even more, the extreme case is this. Which, by the way, don't do this, okay, in your sketches. Don't use this projection. So in this case, what we do is we cut in half to make it look like it's right. But again, that's 90 degrees. Don't use that for this exercise, OK? It's just too easy. Um, all right. And this sketch just shows how I quickly determined the proportions of this object. So what I did is I took my, my, my box and I said, well, that looks about 3 to 2 proportion. And uh, but it's a little bit less. But yeah, it's about right. Yeah. It's probably four. It's a little, this, of course, since I did this with another card, it's a little bit different. But, but anyway, that's one quick way to, you know, double up or triple up to see how big it is without having to measure it. Um, so from my drawing here, just I was assuming, I was pretending that it was like three parts for the box, and then the roof is like another part, so it goes up, and then this one is maybe half of that right here. So maybe that's here. Okay, so just little, you know, little tricks. Um, once again, to find this line, just take the middle, the, the real middle, okay, not the, pers you know, this is not perspective, it's isometric, axonometric, so everything, we take it face value, so we split that in half, we raise it, so the top of my roof would be there. And then the other lines, again, are all parallel and not converging. Uh, that just shows again, you know, the, using the triangles. When we start using the triangle, you know, this will become obvious. Uh, once again, try to do your lines just for the beginning now, you know, keeping this motion and not do this or um, one. If you hold the pencil this way, also you have more room to touch and have a nice support of your arm. If you hold it too close, then, then you're forced to kind of tilt it, and then you have very little support just on the little finger there. Okay. Uh, this drawing just shows that you know, I can find my relationships in the object by using diagonals. So if I wanted to find, for example, the middle of this, I could do two diagonals here. At that point, I would draw a parallel to that line. And that would give me the half point there. And I could go on like that. Right? For the bottle, again, the uh, orthographic is very simple. Well, not super simple, but what it is, it's your top view, and now I'm already stuck here because this is 
let's see, that's this much, one, two, at least it's about three times as wide, so one, two, three. So again, you have to block it out, so you can see my drawing here is going to need to go a little bit further out, my framing. I just try to get a few proportions. And try to simplify it. I mean, obviously, something like this is really, really complicated. And actually, because it's transparent, it's even harder because it's, you know, it's a little confusing. But, but if you have all these lines, it's up to you, like, how detailed you want to get. Just try to get the main shape because there is enough there to you know, keep you busy. Now remember, if it is orthographic, the bottom is a straight line, more or less. Okay, I mean, it goes in a little bit, but, but don't show an ellipse. And the same for the top, don't show an ellipse because you're seeing it straight on, so you're seeing a straight line. Okay, it's all straight lines. It's hard for you to actually abstract that concept because when you look at it, you're going to be seeing it in perspective. I mean, right? I mean, everything is... So this would be a, just a series of straight lines. So that's for the orthographic. Now for the uh, for the isometric, um, you have to do ellipses. Okay, so you need to exercise doing ellipses, and there is a couple of tutorials on ellipses. And the trick with ellipses is that you just you keep your hand moving, and then you kind of like, okay, now I'm ready, and now I'm going to draw one. And you can practice different. You know, shallow, shallownesses. No, different shallow. You know, thinner or more fat. You can practice doing the same width, but you know, a little more. As you get towards the real circle, it gets harder and harder because it's a lot easier to do this since it approximates a straight line. Um, whatever you do, um, if you do the ball straight up, remember that the ellipse you, you draw, ellipse you draw is always going to be straight like this in relation to your paper, okay? It's not going to be like that and then all of a sudden the ball goes like this, that, that's wrong. So you have two axes, the short one and the long one. So the long one goes with your motion and the short one goes with the axis of your arm. Okay, so you should just do that, just do a lot of ellipses. And when you're ready to draw the ball, what you can do, you can start out, let's do one that's straight. So you start maybe by the main, the main axis. And then, um, we pick an angle. I mean, again, the closer you get to being straight on top, the least of an angle you see. So you have to kind of decide how, um, how you want to do it. If you did an isometric, that would be about a ratio of about two to one. So if this was the bottom, say, um, this is about double that, okay? And that may be a good place to start. So if I inscribe an ellipse in there, so just for fun, you can try to like kind of you know, maybe, you know, maybe determine where your main cuts are, where your main... Okay, so you just, you just build it up like that. Maybe that's a little smaller here, a little bigger. It's a little hard for me here because I have too many things, you know, this space is too small, I have to speak into the mic, and so I'm totally constricted, but uh, it should be easier for you. And then you just start connecting. So maybe there's a slight curve. All right, so it's not bad, but it's not really super symmetrical, so I can adjust it a little bit. Um, and then you can go back in and, uh, if you wanted to play around with like what we call contour lines, you could even define 
some other lines to give it more volume. So, for example, I could draw these sort of cross lines and then I would try to follow all these points, say on the back here, right, like that. So maybe that's a little, and then here maybe. So then, for the other ones, again, just pick an angle, the one that's maybe lying on the ground, and then whatever you do, as long as you pick that axis, the short axis of your lips is going to correspond to your long axis in your object. So what I can do now is go like that. This is I'm not saying I don't know exactly what's in front and what's in back. Um, okay. So then you'd have to uh, fix that by saying, okay, that's in the front. So I'm going to make that and start, you know, start letting the other lines recede a little bit. All right. So, but I want to get around and actually help you start this project. So I'm just going to stop that here. Uh, I think the sketch says, I mean, the assignment says various angles. So it's up to you, at least two, I would say. You know, at least these two views, but maybe you can have, you know, you can play around with doing some that are like, you know, almost extreme perspective, almost like totally front. Uh, okay, so I'll stop there.